On this episode of This Is Game Boy Light, we treasure the little things in life, like huge wads of money and jewelry. Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of This is a Game Boy Light featuring myself, Mula. It's my turn again to uh, make a solo episode, record a solo episode, however you want to call it. Um, so next full episode we will of course be back uh, talking about Cosmo Tank, uh, which is a, a very cool game to talk about. Um, Still need to do some some research into it. There might be a lot to say about it, uh, but yeah, you will find out everything about that in the next full episode, which normally comes out two weeks after this. Um, anyways, I am recording this like a few days after we uh, recorded our episode on Swamp Thing, so I haven't been up to much to be perfectly honest um, like I mentioned in that episode I was playing Tomb Raider uh, the, the PS4 version like the revamp by uh, Square Enix um, I've completed the single player at least um, and as I mentioned then there's still like 24 hours left uh, if you want to play the multiplayer to get all the achievements but i do not care one bit for that so for me that game is done um i did move on to the next one already uh, rise of the tomb raider um i played a little bit so far of it it seems uh, a little bit more focused on exploring and then being in actual tombs uh, compared to the original which was more action oriented Oriented, um, oriented, oriented, right? Yeah, oriented. Um, so I'm liking this one a little bit more so far, but I've only played like half an hour, so I can't really, really say much uh, about that. But um, it's looking good so far, at least. Um, <clears throat> this one has three multiplayer trophies. I haven't really seen what they are, so I hope they are really just like get online and then do a few things. I hope that's literally everything. Maybe even only for the DLC, because um, there's a lot of DLC for that game, apparently. Um, one unlocked for me. I don't know, like I have a version, um, like a special version, like it comes with like an art book and things like that. And it unlocked one DLC for me. So I'm not sure if that's free DLC or the rest is uh, payable or that I just have a version. <clears throat> that includes uh, all the DLC, but uh, I'll I'll see where that goes. Uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, what else can I say? Like, I mean, un when Uncharted One came out, um, it really set the tone for how these games would uh, be made in the future, and it clearly shows. Um, but I do feel like Uncharted is a at this point a better Tomb Raider series than the actual Tomb Raider series. So uh, that's kind of kind of odd to see um, but yeah I have to still have two new Tomb Raiders to check out basically so um, I'll be sure to let you know what I think about the entire trilogy so far uh, once I'm done with it um, and besides that I've still uh, been playing Alice Madness Returns so I'm not sure if I mentioned that last time if I even started it back then but uh, yeah it's a it's a pretty fun game uh, um, the camera really is an issue with it. Um, a nightmare mode is kicking my butt. Um, yeah, I'm still only at chapter two after like eight hours, uh, and there's like six six chapters, I believe. Um, so this game is pretty long. Maybe it's due to the fact that I keep dying over and over again in fights on nightmare mode. Um, but yeah, it, it's really cool. I think uh, <clears throat> people should definitely check it out if they want to, uh, but don't expect too much of it, like, it, it's not the best game out there, but it's, uh, it, it's pretty cool, it's, it's a nice little 3D exploration platformer game, um, if the fights were a little bit better, it would be, uh, yeah, a little, 
better. <laughs> There's nothing more I can say about that. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's definitely worth checking out if you can find a copy because they're not that easy to find unless you, of course, just uh, buy it on Steam. Uh, but yeah, that's literally all I've been up to. I haven't played any Game Boy games anymore. Still need to get back to q -Bert. And then I'll probably play some games for uh, future episodes that I have not uh, touched upon yet so um, yeah those are definitely my plans for the near future um, anyways this episode uh, like you have already read in the title is about Wario Land 2 uh, one of my all-time favorite Game Boy games and all-time favorite games um, I don't want to say it's uh, my absolute favorite Game Boy game, like it, it's always hard for me to say that, uh, but it's definitely in my top five Game Boy games, um, together with like Leaks Awakening and For the Frog the Bell Tolls, um, and things like that, Final Fantasy Adventure or Mystic Quest, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, I hold this one in high regards, and um, I really wanted to talk more about it because I haven't like done an uh, actual episode on it yet, um, and I don't think uh, Baltic would be interested in doing a full episode on it here because he doesn't like this game that much as I do. Uh, but yeah, um, let's dive uh, right into the game after this uh, little break. Enjoy this epic song. Welcome back everybody, I hope you enjoyed that amazing song called The Journey Home, which is uh, basically the credit song for Mario Land 2 and is one of my favorite compositions for, uh, for the entire Game Boy library to be honest, it's definitely one of my favorite songs of, uh, of all the games on Game Boy. Um, and uh, yeah, like Mario Land 2 just has some amazing music in it. Um, all of it is actually composed by Kosue Ishikawa, um, who also uh, made all the music for Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3. Uh, Wario Land 3, um, she helped with The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, she did some things for Earthbound, uh, Star Fox 2, Mario Tennis, and for the Nintendo puzzle collection. I have no idea what that one is actually. Um, after that she really didn't do much anymore, like nobody knows what she's up to right now, so um, yeah, maybe she just uh, retired and is uh, living out her life as a house mother or something like that, I don't know. Um, but yeah, she did make some amazing, amazing music, which is uh, which is great. Um, so Wario Land 2 came out in uh, March of 1998 um, in the US and also in 1998 in uh, Europe. Um, there is no Japanese release for this version of the game. Uh, and a lot of people will say, but hey, isn't this actually a Game Boy Color game? Well, it did come out on a black card so it was um, definitely available to be played on any of the systems like if you don't know the black cards they were made uh, during the transition period from Game Boy to Game Boy Color but a lot of people didn't have a Game Boy Color yet so they made black cards that could run on a normal Game Boy uh, without any of the color enhancements and when you played it on your Game Boy Color it did have color but this game actually did get like a great card release because um, otherwise we wouldn't really be talking about this like maybe in the future we'll uh, go into the Game Boy Color library or Game Boy Advance library a little bit but yeah, our mo main focus is basically on the classic Game Boy um, so yeah and this came out on the gray card uh, but like I said not in Japan so they only did that for uh, the Western 
audiences. Uh, what the reason behind that is, I have no idea. Maybe Japan picked up the Game Boy Color a lot more quickly than uh, we did. Um, and <clears throat> maybe they just wanted to make sure that everybody uh, had a chance to play this game, uh, even though they had the black card as well, which was... Uh, like ready to be played by anybody anyways. Um, developer and publisher, of course, Nintendo. This is a main Mario quote-unquote uh, game. So of course, Nintendo made this. Um, so this is a direct sequel to uh, Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3, which I still kind of wish they didn't name Super Mario Land 3, but it made sense to, well, to sell it, of course. Uh, but yeah, that game at Pretty much nothing to do with Mario except for the final scene where um, you find Princess Peach's... Uh, I think it's Peach though, yeah. Pretty sure it's Peach where you find Princess Peach's uh, statue and Mario just uh, basically steals it uh, right out <laughs> under you. So uh, what an asshole that guy, unbelievable. Uh, but yeah, Wario, um, as I mentioned a few times before, is my favorite character of the entire uh, Mario franchise. Uh, I think they did a really well job um, like establishing him in um, Super Mario Land 2. He was a very great antagonist for sure, but they really started exploring uh, the character during this game uh, and the previous game where they really fleshed him out, um, made sure that it was obvious that he wasn't really uh, a bad guy but more of an anti-hero that just wanted to get rich and live a happy life uh, because of his riches and not so much like uh, cause havoc or, or try to steal things or try to kidnap princesses or anything like that. Um, and that's an interesting take on, on the well-beloved uh, character Mario, who, who is always the hero, who always has to rescue people. Um, and that it doesn't concern Wario at all. Like all he wants to do is uh, sleep and get treasure. So that's that's his main focus in life. And I think that's uh, pretty funny that they made like an entire character out of him. Um, Wario Land, the series has come a long way, I guess. Like Wario Land 3 came out for Game Boy Color, which is also one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, you had Wario Land 4 for Game Boy Advance, which in my opinion, isn't that great. Um, I don't know. I, I don't like the style uh, or the way that game works, really. Um, the graphics are fine. It, it's just like the mechanics of that game don't sit very well with me. And uh, yeah, I'd rather play two or three instead of four. Um, after that, we got uh, Wario World on GameCube. From uh, made by Treasure, which is kind of ironic to make a Wario Land game or a Wario World game, and, and your company is named Treasure. Um, and then we had Shake Dimension on the Wii, which is also an amazing game, a little bit held back, of course, by um, the mandatory motion graphics, but uh, that game features amazing cutscenes, uh, very funny. Uh, very funny cutscene, especially the final one. Um, amazing gameplay for sure, besides the motion controls, but they aren't that like you have to use them a lot, but they're not that uh, that important. Um, it, it's uh, it has some of the best music on Wii. Um, I don't know who composed the music for that one, but it's absolutely amazing. Uh, but the problem is that game sold uh, very, very poorly for whatever reason. Like, maybe it's because it was just a 2D platformer and people weren't looking for that um, anymore during that time. Like, everything was, was moving on to 3D and it was a period where 2D platforming games weren't really that popular anymore. Um, Especially not because the Wii was basically the system for everybody, but um, the, the the everybody mostly went into smaller children and, and older people. So anything in between, like teenagers and, and people in their 20s, early 20s, they weren't really into that kind of uh, gaming anymore. So that's, that's probably why it sold well. And... 
because of that, there hasn't been a new Wario Land game ever since, which is a real shame, uh, because in my opinion, like the Wario Land games um, are actually an amazing series. Besides 4 for me, but that's just a personal uh, preference. Um, anyways, the plot of this game, so it's a direct sequel basically to uh, Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3, where you went up against uh, Captain Syrup and her Black Sugar gang. Um, so in this game, uh, they return um, early one morning. Uh, Captain Syrup and a few of her soldiers, uh, called the Pirate Goobs, sneak into Wario's castle and cause havoc. Uh, they steal his treasure, uh, his beloved pet hen, called Hen. <laughs> Very original there. Uh, set off his giant alarm clock, uh, leave the tap running, flooding basically his entire castle. Um, when Wario wakes up and figures what's going on, he gives chase across the surrounding lands to try and catch up to Captain Syrup and get his treasure back. Um, very simple plot, like I said, Wario doesn't really care for much besides his treasure, so um, he's just gonna go uh, go after them and, and try and get it back. Um, so let's dive a little bit into the gameplay. Um, unlike standard platforming games and coming definitely from Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3, uh, this game actually features um, no lives, uh, no damage or anything like that. Like you can basically not die in this game. Um, there unless you glitch the game or something but uh, yeah you, you cannot uh, die or game over um, you are pretty much invulnerable uh, the only downside of getting hit is that you lose uh, some of your collected coins throughout the stages um, and those coins are actually used to play two mini games uh, one hidden throughout a stage which uh, unlocks the hidden treasure for that stage and uh, the second one is for getting a puzzle piece to fill out a puzzle of I think 50 stages so 50 puzzle pieces or I might be wrong I think it's 50 but I might be wrong it might be a little bit less um, <clears throat> and that's if you collect all of those you actually get access to the final level of the game um, Wario, however, can be hit by certain enemies or obstacles to undergo some kind of transformation uh, that you need to solve uh, some kind of puzzle platforming or to uncover hidden routes to more coins, uh, the treasure door, or the secret exit out of the level. Uh, and I'll get back to that in a bit. But yeah, more you can turn into a zombie, which uh, allows you to drop through certain platforms. Uh, you can turn into, <laughs> well, flames, basically. You get burned, then you can go through some blocks. You can get squished, which gives you the ability to uh, glide through the air and to squeeze in between little gaps. Uh, you can become Tiny Mario, who jump. Did I say Mario? Tiny Wario, uh, who is able to jump very high and also get through uh, through smaller gaps, of course. Um, and you can also get uh, drunk, which doesn't really do anything for you. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, anyways, uh, you go through the levels and each... The game actually consists of multiple worlds, like you start in your castle, you go to a forest, you go to a factory, you go to a city, and you go to Syrup's castle. Those are the five main levels, um, and each of these worlds has a unique boss fight at the end of it, um, also tied to a stage, so it's not, just, uh, it's not just a boss fight, it's a stage with a boss fight in it. Um, these boss fights usually revolve around not getting hit, uh, because if you get hit you basically quote-unquote fall off the boss's stage and you have to backtrack a little bit to uh, get back to the boss. It's usually just two doors but it basically resets the entire fight. Um, you need to either stun the boss, uh, dash into the boss, or use obstacles or enemies to throw into the boss to damage it. Kind of depends on, uh, on which boss you are fighting. Um, there is one unique, very unique fight however, which is against uh, the basketball bunny in um, the city stage, um, where you actually have to win by jumping onto the bunny, 
transforming him to him into a ball and using him as a basketball to uh, score some points uh, by throwing him into the hoop. Uh, once you get three points, you actually win the fight. But it works the other way around as well. He can jump on you, turn you into a ball, and score some points as well. So yeah, that's pretty unique. The other bosses are a little bit more standard, but they all have like one unique mechanic to them, which makes them very, very interesting to fight. Um, <clears throat> every stage is in theory pretty short if you just go straight for the exit, uh, but the game actually really rewards you for exploring its many and when I say many, I really, really, really mean many uh, hidden rooms, uh, which you can access by smashing through walls, using enemies or abilities to go through uh, different areas or two different areas. Uh, so you can actually gain access to these hidden rooms. Uh, these hidden rooms always consist of more coins, of course, like there's nothing else to find in them. Then besides that but that's the entire point of the game of course getting uh, coins to get the treasures or to get the puzzle pieces and you can of course save up if you want to but it, it doesn't really do anything um, i know you can get to 9999 nine, nine, nine coins in total in the end but if as far as i remember it doesn't really do anything um I, like unlike in in Super Mario Land 3, where if you get 9999 or even 99,999, um, you don't need that much, but uh, it get it gives you the best ending of the game. But uh, that is not tied to the endings in this game at all. Um, <clears throat> um, like I mentioned before, uh, the uh, Later levels, uh, mostly hidden levels, require a lot more puzzle solving to get to the exit. Uh, but nothing is so convoluted that uh, you would get stuck for hours. Like all the stages are pretty simple and self-explanatory. Um, so I can only think of uh, two hidden levels actually that uh, require a bit more thinking. Um, one of them is in the underwater world and one of them is in the ghost house. Um, <clears throat> Those puzzles are a little bit harder, but again, it's it's really not that bad um, to get through. Like it, it might take you half an hour maybe to get through those stages, but once you figure it out, it's actually pretty easy. Um, anyways, not having to worry about dying in this game makes it, in my opinion, a really enjoyable experience. Um, so it just means you can have fun at your own pace uh, by getting through the stages and seeing what the game has to offer. Uh, you can enjoy the great compositions while playing the game because all of the music really fits the stages that you are in. Uh, you can enjoy the graphics because they are actually pretty, pretty good for this game. Like uh, one of the best graphics for Game Boy in my opinion. It's, it's like a really polished, you can see that good old Nintendo polish in there. Um, I did find out that um, if you play the uh, black cards, I think, on normal Game Boy that it looks worse than if you would play the gray card, if I read it correctly. Um, something about the palette they use that, that doesn't translate very well. I, I think it was something like that, so maybe it's it's better to just play the, uh, the gray card and because <laughs> it looks a little bit better. I don't know. Um, might be hard to see anyways on a Game Boy screen, but if you're playing it on a bigger screen, it, it, uh, it might definitely show up. Um, so I talked about the five worlds that this game has to offer, and uh, once you finish this, which is pretty much what, uh, what people call the main story of this game, um, you get access to a level select screen and on this you can see in which stages that you missed any treasure or that you missed any of the puzzle pieces. So you can just replay that level and try and get uh, the ones you missed. But um, you might also see that there are some branching paths uh, out of some stages. And here I come back to uh, the hidden levels of this game. Um, there are, I think, five hidden uh, 
paths you can fight find throughout the game and uh, each offers like a different path that either is just an alternate route leading into the next world or that actually has its own ending to it um the game actually due to all of the hidden pets provides you with five different normal endings so so those are the ones you can get access to if you find the hidden pets throughout the game um but there's also a sixth true ending and in order to get that like i mentioned before you have to collect all the puzzle pieces and that uh, shows you a map where the final stage is basically and um, that's pretty much a challenge stage as i like to call it um, you are giving a timer not so much that if you run out you die i actually don't think that's possible but it's more of a thing to see how fast you can actually get through that stage because it requires you to use all the abilities you've uh, used throughout the entire game and the platforming is a lot harder uh, there's a lot more ways for you to um, get pushed back like very far into the stage and then you have to do everything all over again so um, if you're if you are willing to take that challenge uh, to get that final ending, just be prepared that it's not as easy as the rest of the game. But I think it's like a very nice uh, way to to um, to end the game and give you like uh, the actual true ending to this game. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much uh, the entire gameplay. I didn't really talk about the controls, I guess. Um, I think the controls are fine. Um, your abilities are, of course, the charge dash, which was uh, available in the original Wario Land. Um, there's no hats or anything like that, um, so you can't fly or or, um, or use a flamethrower or anything like that. Um, you still have your butt smash that you can use, which uh, is still used on some of the mini bosses like the big uh, spear guys that you might remember from uh, the previous game um, you can do a normal jump you can do a high jump by holding uh, the up button while you jump to reach a little bit higher platforms and you can uh, use slopes to roll down into a little ball and then you can can like jump around uh, kind of sonic style i guess uh, but that's pretty much all of the abilities you have um, i think it works fine at least for this game but i have heard a lot of people say that it does feel kind of sluggish um, i can agree to that to some extent but it really um, it shows you the weight of wario um, no no real pun intended there but um, because he's a little fatter um, because he's a little bit more slow than Mario would be um, I feel like the way the game handles the controls or, or your movement actually really fits uh, fits the game um, it was a little bit better in uh, the original Wario Land but I think that's mostly due to the fact that uh, there were a lot more movement options for Wario. Um, I think like his normal standards, jumping and, and dashing and things like that are pretty much the same, but um, like especially the flying uh, gave you a lot more mobility in the original Wario Land, but mobility isn't really something you uh, need in this game. It's really more about just the exploration and not uh, not the precise platforming even though it is required for uh, some stages especially the final challenge stage but yeah that's pretty much uh, pretty much all i can say about the gameplay um diving very shortly into the cover art it's it's super standard it just shows uh, wario doing one of his dashes and it says wario land 2 uh, and there's like a gradient in the background and that's pretty much it. This is actually a really boring uh, cover to be perfectly honest, especially if you compare it to the cover of um, Super Mario Land 3 or Wario Land. Like I love that cover and I think I have like uh, a file on my computer somewhere of somebody who uh, redrew the entire thing. Um, in like a very good quality and it just looks freaking amazing um, whereas this is, is yeah actually just pretty boring but yeah okay it's Wario uh, so you know what game you are getting 
Nah. Moving on, um, I do have one little bit of trivia. I mentioned earlier that there is a way to get drunk in this game. Um, that is only true basically in the Japanese version of this game. Um, there are some penguin enemies that uh, throw an obstacle at you in this game, which I think is a bowling ball in this game which makes you dizzy um, making it harder to move like you waggle around uh, the stage and things like that you, you can use it to even jump up things uh, but um, it's it's just something to annoy you not to help you in this game um, the only ways to get out of the daze is by getting hit by another enemy um, or to actually fall into water. Uh, water, I guess it kind of makes sense if you're a little bit dizzy that if you dive into water that, that your head gets clearer. But uh, in the Japanese version, the original version, those penguins actually throw beer at you. So it's not like you're dizzy, you're just drunk. So then it makes sense that uh, if you fall into the water that uh, you get sober again. So yeah, that's, that's all the trivia I've got for this game. Um, when it comes to general reception, um, in old media it received uh, critical acclaim, um, especially the Game Boy Color version received uh, pretty much a score of 9 out of 10 uh, all over the board. Um, when uh, the game came to virtual console uh, years later, um, the re-release also get not, uh, got a 9 out of 10, um, arguing that big fans of the first game might lament Warrior Lands 2's sudden significant change in gameplay, uh, but if you give it a try you'll find that it's actually quite good. <laughs> I think qu quite good is an understatement, especially if you give it a 9 out of 10. Uh, I think it's uh, actually amazing. Uh, but yeah, that's maybe just personal preference. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely uh, always gets high praise this game, so that's good. Um, so yeah, that's uh, basically the entire overview of what this a game is. So let's take a little break with another great song from this amazing game. And when I get back, I'll dive into my thoughts and history with the game. And here we are again. You might uh, remember that song from Wario Land 1 if you played that game. It's uh, the song that plays when you're on the terrain stages and well, it's pretty much the same in this game. It also gets used for uh, for the terrain stages. Uh, anyways, my host, uh, my host, anyways, my thoughts and history with the game. Uh, I played this game extensively uh, when I was a kid, like uh, since I got it like I, I played it constantly like literally constantly um i don't remember which version i got though because i do not have it anymore i do not have my original copy anymore but i did get another uh, gray card copy of it um on a flea market or something like that um i was able to get through the main storyline easily uh, even discovered one of the secret paths by accident and um, spoilers i guess um if you in the very first stage never get up um when the alarm clock is going off you just sleep through it um the spearmen just throw you out of the castle and it takes you to um to an alternate storyline where they um where they take over your castle uh, and then you have to go get it back um so yeah staying in bed i don't know how i found it i probably just left my game boy running while i went to the bathroom or something or went to grab a snack or something to drink and when i came back i saw that i <laughs> that i finished this stage and i was like wait i didn't play at all and yeah then it got apparent to me that uh, <laughs> there actually was uh, a hidden path there which i knew from the level select screen but i had no idea how to access it 
Um, so yeah, I finished that one, got the second ending, and then I uh, tried looking for the other hidden exits. And I could not find any of those for a long time, even though I knew in which stage they were. Um, even got to that point that I got my mom uh, to call the Nintendo hotline uh, for it. Like, I never done anything like that before. I didn't have access to, like, Nintendo Power. There wasn't any internet back then uh, to go check those things out. So, um, Nintendo hotline was basically the only other solution. Um, but she wasn't able to get into contact with them at that time. So, I was still completely, completely baffled on how to do this. But surprisingly, enough the same day um, I actually discovered a secret exit out of the basement stage and then I figured out how to actually get the secret exits throughout all the other levels because uh, the secret exits are a little bit more convoluted um, it requires you to um, find very well hidden breakable walls um, and some of those breakable walls have to be done by using enemies uh, but usually the the walls where you break through which require enemies have the little enemy symbol on them but those ones do not have it at all so um so i was just throwing <laughs> enemies into walls everywhere and then suddenly hey there's this, it, it can go through this wall i'm so happy about this so um yeah it was a very easy from that point onward to just get everything and then actually uh was able to get through the final stage and finally complete this game uh, i probably did it all in the same day at that point because I was so excited that I actually found out how to do it and it was probably one of the best days of my life when it comes to gaming so that's great um, so yeah um, why is this game so amazing for me uh, it basically put the standard on what I look for and enjoy in the game um, I love exploring every nook and cranny for secrets at my own pace uh, without the game forcing me to do things a certain way like this game really allows you to just do whatever you want and that is uh, really fun and like there's no downside to exploring or experimenting uh, all you do is lose coins um, if you already have the treasure and the puzzle piece it, those coins don't even matter but it's just fun to see how they actually built these stages and where they put hidden things and I'm like 100 percent sure I still don't know where every little uh, room or coin in this game is even to this day and I've played this game for definitely a hundred hours so far um, it usually takes me around like eight hours to uh, to get through the game 100 percent so just add that up uh, over the course of like what uh, when did it came out again 98 so over the course of 22 years I've, I've played this game a lot um but yeah like um I always also say that open worlds are not for me, um, even though I like exploring. Um, that's because I think they are a bit too much for me. Like, I really need smaller levels or areas to explore um, to the fullest and not just like, hey, here's uh, an entire map the size of uh, New York or whatever, just do whatever you want and, and find whatever you can find. I think that's a little bit too much for me. I, I rather like smaller areas where I can actually understand when I have found everything and not so much like, oh, this is do whatever and there's still things to find even though you have no idea where to find them or even need to find them um, like in Wario Land you don't need to find them here but it's, it's just a little bit more contained and it's for me a lot more fun to explore those kinds of things but yeah those are my uh, my thoughts and history with Wario Land 2 um, diving very shortly into the speedrunning section because uh, we had we have put Wario Land 2 um, in Tiny 10 before. Um, there are four categories for this game. Any percent, main story, all levels, and 100%. 100% um, of course is uh, all levels, all treasures, all puzzle pieces, and get to the uh, final stage. All levels is just uh, just 
all the levels without the final challenge stage. As far as I know, main story is the path that I described at the beginning, not taking any secret exits. And any percent is probably the most run category, uh, which basically is you stay asleep and then you play five stages. That's that's uh, actually <laughs> the the easiest one to do. Um, it's it's like a ten minute run, give or take. Like I think the record it's eight minutes and fifty seconds something like that um, and it's a lot of fun and that's also the one we put in uh, in tiny 10 because um, because this game has no damage or no game overs or things like that all comes down to uh, pretty much precise movement to get through the stages and then how to handle the boss fight um, I'm not gonna spoil the boss fight but uh, it's kind of interesting to see how it's done in the speedrun compared to how you normally do it um, it requires a lot of tight timing which uh, which I really like um, as far as I know the color version is a preferred version uh, for speedrunning this and I believe it is due to like a glitch that uh, either isn't present in the gray card version or harder to do. Um, it's, it's something about screen wrapping um, during one of the stages. Um, I, I remember it like I've never tried doing it myself, I'm not good at things like that but um, I think the, on the color version it's easier to do, I, I think that's it, but um, if you're interested uh, in, in a speedrun for Game Boy Color then, I guess, or even the the normal version, you can do it perfectly fine on that as well, and it's only 10 minutes, just uh, take a look at it, um, it doesn't require anything really technical, it's just all movement based, um, so you can get better at it the more you try it, so I would definitely suggest you check it out. Alright, that's all I have to say about this game, so let's take another short break and then I'll uh, say my goodbyes. Alright, I hope you enjoyed that last song from uh, Wario Land 2. So, um, as always, you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube under uh, the slash Mule URL, which is M O E L L E U H. Uh, you can find my co host Baltic on Twitch under Baltic Gaming on Twitter under Baltic Gaming. And on YouTube, under some very weird URL that you're never going to be able to uh, to actually type in. But you can just look for Balti Gaming, and I'm sure he will pop up. Um, of course, you can find our lovely producer Sprinting Lex on uh, Twitch, under Sprinting Lex. Um, Twitter on Sprinting Lex, YouTube, Legs, I believe, but it's also like a, a big URL. Uh, but you can find the link to all of our other projects and things like that on our own website, uh, sprintinglex.com. Of course, if you don't want to type all of these things in, just go to our website, gbrunners.com slash TIGB, where you can just find buttons that link you to all of these social media things, which is a lot easier than typing stuff in, because typing is for old people. Yes, we are not old, we just click buttons now. Um, you can also, of course, find uh, links to our Patreon on there um, if you want to support us monthly uh, with like a subscription-based uh, support thingy, then you can head over there, um, you can place your own amount in there, doesn't really matter. If you give us one dollar, you get access to our uh, episode notes. Um, you get special access to some uh, channels in our Discord, and we also sometimes post like uh, a blooper reel or something like that, which you can have access to. Um, 
I don't know what my what the other tier is anymore, so I'm gonna check. Right, if if you drop if you drop five dollars a month, you get the ability to suggest games for listener episodes. Uh, we don't have uh, that many people who are dropping five dollars a month, so we haven't been able to do any of that. So um, yeah, if there's more people who are actually in the game child tier, as we call it, um, we can start doing that. Um, either way, our goal is to get twenty dollars a month for starters, so we can do more live recordings of these podcasts that will also be put on our YouTube. Um, do you want to uh, support us for one time only? You can do that as well. There is a link to our uh, paypal.me. So if you just want to drop your hard-earned cash to us for one time only, you can also support us through that. Do you want to support us but not through money. Well, the only way is to listen to more episodes. Uh, do it on SoundCloud, do it on uh, iTunes, do it on whatever else you are using. We should be available on most, if not all, uh, podcast apps. Um, if you happen to come across one that we are not on, let us know and we will make sure that we will get on there as well. Um, and if you really want to help us out a little bit more, spread the word on this, you can do so by, of course, retweeting our tweets or just by reviewing um, our uh, episodes, especially on uh, on iTunes. Um, if you can do it through there, if you can just uh, rate us or write a little review about it, um, that also helps us to get higher in the charts. Um, Anyways, um, if you just want to talk to us, please join our Discord. You can ask us questions there for upcoming episodes. There's always a channel available with the upcoming episodes where you can drop your questions. Or if you have another question, just a random question, you can always contact us for that, of course. But yeah, that's me signing out. We will see you next time for Cosmo Tank. Bye-bye. Tinkle? Yeah, I just said tinkle.